It's a hot day in the mountains of southern Appalachia. Earlier today, Matt and I managed to get all the beans picked. We picked some cucumbers, harvested some tomatoes, some peppers. Then we had to stop and go take care of something, go for an appointment. Now we're back and we're going to finish up working outside for today. There's some, several things that we need to do. Uh, one of the first things we're going to try to do is harvest our onions. We never grow enough onions to make it through the entire winter, but we do grow enough to at least enjoy. And uh, if you've grown onions, you know you kind of have to let them lay out and dry and cure. If you just took them inside and put them up now, they would, they would rot on you, so what would happen? So we're going to work on that. We're also, this is the time of the year when things begin, this is August now, when things begin to kind of die back. So there's some things that we're thinking about pulling out in the hopes that those are places that we're going to plant some fall things. I think turnips and some mustard greens, some lettuce and kale, maybe some more onions that we could just enjoy as green onions. So we're going we're gonna to work on that too. Before we start on the onions, we were over here looking at some of the butter beans. Look at those, don't those look great? Our only problem is we've not grown them enough to know when you're supposed to actually harvest them. So someone please, please give us some information about that. These are really still really firm. So I'm thinking maybe it's not time yet, but I can't wait to try them. The most exciting thing in this bed is look at these peas. These are the Holstein pea. Now I know they're not ready because I can't even feel a pea inside them yet, but I can't wait to try them. And this is one of the varieties that Debbie from Bryson Farm Supply shared with me. And they really did. The little pea looked like a, a little Holstein cow, if you will. Had the, it was like a white with black with a little spot, really pretty pea. So Matt noticed one of them was about broke open. Oh, look how beautiful. Look, how many more is in there, Matt? This is the Bill Mathis bean. Bill Mathis butter bean. Whoops. Oh my goodness, they're beautiful. Oh, they're so pretty. Now we just need enough to eat. I guess that means that we could probably harvest the rest of the, these, the biggest ones, don't you think? I don't think so. Let's try another one. Oh yeah, beautiful. So I guess we, we answered our own question. Of course, you could leave them and let them dry, and then you'd have dried, you know, dried beans if you wanted to save them for that. Those but we were, we were more interested in eating them fresh. Mm, those look great. So pretty. You're too pretty to eat. I know, almost. I think we need some some peas and some cornbread. Don't that sound good? Oh, sure. Matt can hold on to them. They're slick with that little membrane on them. Yeah. So pretty. Here's a couple of our volunteer winter squash. Here's a, a pumpkin, looks like a Chambers Creek. I'm pretty positive that's what it is. And then right behind it, um, a butternut squash. This whole bed has really just turned into a giant jungle, but even in the midst of all the chaos, I think it's just beautiful. This is the fronds of asparagus. This is an asparagus bed. And I guess we put compost in here is where the squash come from. But there's another butternut that's kind of hanging up in the air. But it's a really big one, so that one's going to be good. More butternuts down on this side. There's one. And here's one that's not as far along yet. Still a pretty good size one, though. And just above that one is another one. So it looks like we're going to grow as many butternut squash out of our compost accident as we are in our the ones we planted on purpose. I've always said volunteers are so magical that way. They seem more vigorous, hardier, and you didn't even do anything to get them to grow. Bees and other pollinators are really working our herb bed here today. I can't believe, and Matt can't either, how the hyssop a lot of you told me that the bees would just love it. Well, they do. They're just, it's just like this. Every time I've come out all summer long, 
bees and butterflies and all sorts of things have just been all over it. And the plant has stayed really pretty all year too. So even for just an ornamental, I think it would be wonderful. And that's basically what we're using it for because we've not harvested any of the hyssop and, and used it. But there's probably, gosh, 20 bees on it right now, just working away. So it's been a beautiful plant. I'm really, really happy. Oh, I see over here, there's some ants on it too. Over in here, little ants. There's a little tiny fly. I'm not sure what that one is. But this is one of my favorite places in the garden this year. There's a butterfly. I've really enjoyed it. And obviously the, the insects have too. So we pulled the rest of the cucumbers out of this bed and I'll show you why they were doing no good. You can see there's the little varmints that were eating them right there. But they're gone now and Matt's gonna go ahead and pull up. We did have some onions in here. They've not bothered the onions. They were just bothering the cucumbers. We did still get a lot of cucumbers, but They were certainly trying their best to destroy them. It's a big old onion. Uh -huh. Oh, that's an onion. We've probably never grown one that big. It's a big one. So in this bed, we mostly had onions. We've got some flowers over there. And some of these are gonna be, let's see that one, Matt, about that size. But they'll still dry and eat, just like the big ones. And then the, you can see the biggest ones down there is the ones we planted early in spring. But we'll harvest them all. Sometimes you just need a little bitty onion, so. <laughs> Smell good, Matt? Oh, yeah. The sweet gum tree here is taller than I am, and that's a good example of how our bank will grow back because it was totally cut down, cut back earlier this spring, and that's how much growth in one year is taller than I am. And as you look up the bank, you can see how much has grown back this year and kind of begin to understand why it's just an ongoing job that we have to do. Just a few onions in this one. And the squash I planted in here in this bed actually look way better. Boy, the marigolds are pretty too, aren't they? When it comes to curing onions, there's so many different ways. A lot of people that grow lots of onions, they go ahead and braid them and hang them up, you know, uh, which is really wonderful. I'd love to be able to do that someday. But since we just usually end up with not even a bucket full, this is really more than we usually have. We just lay them out on the porch, let them dry, let them cure out. And then once they are dry, just trim the tops off of them. And lots of times I leave them out here on the porch and just use them as needed. Sometimes that happens because I, once they're done, I kind of forget about them and always think I'm gonna take them into the kitchen. But most of the time they end up staying out here on the porch and I just come and get one when I need it, when I'm cooking. We're gonna have to try one of the big red ones though really quickly, aren't we? Uh-huh. See what we think about them. Sorry. You having trouble? Yeah, I'm struggling a little. <laughs> you done playing, don't need it now. Yeah. 
even though the garden's winding down, we we got a lot. It's amazing. It never gets old going out and picking whether it's cucumbers or tomatoes or beans or whatever. It's always amazing to me. I like seeing full buckets. Mm -hmm. No matter what it is, I like seeing full. So today we got almost full two buckets of, again from the rattlesnake beans. So they've done really good, haven't they? Yeah, they put out And big. still no bug damage. I did notice two, like maybe two bugs on them today. Did you see any? <clears throat> I'll just tell you, you always ask me about those bugs. I can't see them. Can't see them? Because I've not got glasses on in the bean patch and I can't see them. Oh. And if I put my glasses on, then I can't see nothing else but the I mean, I can just see right, right there. there. Yeah. So I don't wear them. Well, I've I just seen one or two. And normally by this time, they're just eating them alive. Mm -hmm. So that's another plus. I don't think I, we always, Tommy Toes are always, they're kind of known for being prolific. And a Tommy Toe, if you don't know what that is, it just means a small tomato, like a grape tomato or salad tomato. You want to taste it? Mm -hmm. But um, they're always, they're kind of known for being vigorous and prolific, but I don't think they've ever been, we've ever had as many as this year. Do you, you don't like that one? That's the watermelon one. I mean, it's all right, but it doesn't get as this one. I don't think it's as good as the peach or the coconut either. Anyway, they've never done as good, I don't think, as this year. Do you, Tommy Toes? No, we we literally just can't keep them picked. There's just so many. And we've given them away and shared, and they're still just hanging full. And eat a lot. I'll eat them till my mouth hurts. Mm -hmm. But, be long to be gone and then we'll be wishing we had some because mm -hmm. we ain't gonna buy none. Matt was morning today earlier when we were picking the tomatoes said not much longer the tomato sandwiches will be gone till next year. I had tomato biscuits for breakfast and yeah. a tomato sandwich for lunch and they're just so good but won't be long we'll have to change the menu. You can really begin to see can't you this today in the garden that things are beginning to Oh, yeah. Give out, play out. Yep. I'm starting to die back a little. Yeah. Did you see the winter squash the in that asparagus bed? Yeah. The pumpkins and stuff. So amazing. <coughs> it's all volunteer, ain't it? Mm-hmm. Sometimes when I look at the growth of a volunteer like that, I'm dripping terribly. Um, makes me have, contemplate the theory of planting my whole garden like this year in like November planting it all even tomatoes and everything just direct sowing them and just seeing what happens yeah you'd be going to fruit stand <laughs> well I don't know but it's amazing how <clears throat> those seeds were in our compost and then we they laid out here all winter and then we shuffled them around and then we put them over there and we didn't do anything for them we didn't even necessarily plant them and then look how vigorous and wonderful they've done. It's just amazing. It could be an experiment. You could do, if we had more land, you could do one little area and just literally plant like a row of everything and just leave it and see what happened. Mm -hmm.
I was hopeful that some of my nasturtiums were so beautiful last year, and they are this year too. But I thought maybe some of them will reseed themselves and come back out, but I didn't see any evidence of that. <coughs> I wonder if it depends on the seed. Their seed is so large and kind of fleshy that I wonder the freezing and the whatever might have just what, liquefied it and it went away. Yeah, I don't know. It just might not have been able to survive that kind of cold and mm -hmm. being kind of a tender seed. Because other flowers do, like xenas and even marigolds will reseed, but they're more of a finer, flatter seed. So I don't know. Today, while we were working, me and Matt both was already saying next year we're gonna next year we're gonna you know already planning thinking about next year, which is typical. Once the garden kind of starts playing out, it's then you think, well, I shouldn't have done this. Like my giant marigolds, I should not <coughs> have planted. Of course, I didn't realize they were giant marigolds. I thought they were the little ones, but they were not. And try to get your tomato seed straightened out. Yeah, I think you're going to have to be in charge of that. Yeah. I mean, there's very few Cherokee purples here. No, there's not. You're right. And they just just a there's little not. handful of them. We usually do that whole ba entire bed. Yeah. Because they're so good, but they ended up not being hardly any. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I apologize for that. Well, it's okay, dear. Cool. I just told you don't be need to sober up before you plant your seeds. <clears throat> we'll get you dried out between now and next spring. That way, that, that won't happen again. I think what happened. Okay. Me and Corey just got mixed up, or got mixed up when we was planting them. I don't know which if it was when we were planting them in the greenhouse or when we were planting them in the dirt out here. I don't know what got us confused, but something did. For sure. Because Matt's right. He has very few Cherokee purple. I wonder if it, reusing the same cups from last year and had the old writing on it and you know, just went with yeah, the wrong thing, maybe. We didn't work it out, I thought. I don't know what we did. I just really don't know what we did. I think you ought to go with new cups every year as cheap as they are. We could. I'm just that, that frugal. Might, well, I know, but I mean that might that might help keep this from happening next year if that is if that's what it was, because that very well would, would be an easy way to make that mistake. And you think you can remember from one year to the next and you can't? No, or maybe get some tape and then write on the tape, like masking tape or something. <laughs> yeah, they want to do a bit more than the cup. I mean, you'd look at the masking tape right and then do the same thing again next year. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just cover it over top of the tape. They usually only last, what, two years, three years at the most? Because they get yeah. brittle. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, we got to do something. Make sure Matt gets his Cherokee purples. Yeah. Cherokee reds, as Granny calls them. Yeah. You got any of those Cherokee reds? <clears throat> My goodness, them things are good. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got their own favorite tomato, and that one's mine. Yeah. I like them a lot. I guess my favorite is the little orange Tommy Toe one. They're awful good. Yeah. They got a own unique flavor that's just as rich as it can possibly be, and it's really good. Yeah. It's just hard to make a sandwich out of them. Mm. I've done it. I know, yeah. It ends up in your lap. Yeah, they fall out yeah. on you. Yeah. Speaking of Granny, a lot of you have asked about Granny, and we're so appreciative of all the prayers and the cards <coughs> and the things you've sent her. So nice, thank you so much. It makes her feel very, very special. Uh, it makes us feel special too, and I'm a believer in prayer, so I'm really grateful for those prayers. And she's doing pretty good. She had her test on Monday. It was a difficult test on her, and uh, but she's felt better in the last two days, and we don't have any news yet. We don't have any results of the biopsy of what it, what it was. Uh, 
if it's cancer or if it's not cancer, but it's an in, inoperable mass. So either way, it's not good. They can't take it out and it's affecting different parts of her body. So we're kind of in a holding pattern until we go back and learn of the pathology and then learn what they, what could they do? Is there anything they could do? But she's in good spirits and like I said yesterday and today, she's feeling better. So that's good. That's always a good thing. Still wanting to can. Still wanting to can, yeah. Still wanting to can and uh, always excited for the, anything you take her like that. So, And she's been crocheting, still crocheting. She's been making uh, some little bookmarks that are really pretty. I have to remember and try to show you one of them. So she's, she was really tickled about them. She's so tough. Uh, Matt says she's tough old bird. <laughs> Tougher than a pine knot. Tougher than a pine knot, yeah. So she was so, like after the procedure, it, we were supposed to be there at one thirty. They didn't take her back till after five o'clock. So she'd had nothing to eat. She'd went through all the preparation for it. She was sitting in a hospital waiting room. She was freezing, all that. So it was, you know, I was feeling so bad for her and worrying about her too. But then once it's over and we got her home, um, we're gonna, of course, fix her something good to eat and all that, Paul was doing that. But when I got her home and took her in the door, she just bypassed everything to go, cause Katie met us there, Katie was there, bypassed everything to go to that crochet and show Katie what she'd been working on. I was like, mm -hmm. I would have went straight to my bed and got in my bed and then said, bring me my food, I can't get <laughs> up. You know, she's so tough. We'll let you know about her, and we really do appreciate those prayers so much. We're so thankful for them. We can actually feel them. I can. I know that all of you are pulling for Granny and praying for her, and, and we can feel that. And she's just been tickled to death with the cards and things that people have sent. So thank you so much for being, being kind to Granny. really makes me, me happy. Yeah, I think Matt's right. She'd be canning green beans every day of the world if she could. She's she just if she could just crochet and can green beans. Yeah. Uh, That's what she likes. What the best. she likes the best, yeah. A long time ago when um, Daddy was still alive, he died in 2016. But people would ask her how much, how, or it's like this coat that she makes. She's made all of us. It's kind of like a coat of many colors. It's what it makes you think of. It's kind of patchwork looking, granny squares kind of, but different colors. Anyway, people would say, well, they'd brag on it. You know, I really love that. Did you make it? And she'd say, yeah. And they'd say, well, how long did it take you to make it? That must have been really, you know, something. Must have took you a long time. She said, well, that all depends on how many times I can get Jerry to cook supper. <laughs> so, and he'd tease her and say, yeah, I know, you'd be happy if all you had to do was crochet and, and can green beans. You'd get somebody else to do everything else. Mm -hmm. She said, yeah, I would. So we're going to have some green beans to can. Yeah. I wish we had enough. We're obviously going to have enough peas to eat and enjoy, but I'd like to have enough peas. I hear people talking about canning peas. I'd like to can peas, too. Yeah, we're just going to have to Have to more. figure out, yeah, a better way to plant them. We just had another space like down here and had two more big long rows, then we could do peas in them. Mm -hmm. What's the saying? If wishes were horses, everybody would ride or something. <coughs> uh, well, that ain't exactly the one I know. No. Oh, it's yours. It's no, not it's, nice. Yeah, you can't uh, say it. It's a little R rated. Yeah, I figure. Yeah. But that's a pretty good way to say it. It's getting clean. Yeah. I can't believe August is here. I mean, I don't even know where <clears> this <throat> whole year went. It just went by so fast. Yeah, it just the whole summer blurred through yeah. Mama being sick. Yeah, with Miss Cindy being I sick. I think that's what, what what jumbled up the whole year as far as everything being kind of disorganized and kind yeah. of in a shambles and yeah. it still kind of is but it's 
it's all right. I mean, yeah, it's just, it just it's is what, what it is. is. Yeah, uh, talking about the tomatoes, I remember the day that me and Corey were in the greenhouse actually planting them. She was here, so we brought her over to stay mm -hmm. with us that day. And I remember her and Katie coming out and watching us. Mm -hmm. So yeah, in a weird way, I feel like I've not even been in the garden this year. I mean, I mm -hmm. have, obviously, but it's Just strange. Kind of, yeah. Kind of detached from it some. Which shows how amazing plants are, how yeah. amazing it is to grow your own food, because we do feel like we've kind of been detached from it this year, and it's still producing mm -hmm. wonderful. I mean, you know, there's places like my squash, or squash and cucumber, or not cucumber, squash and zucchini, I did see we have our first zucchini. Was that right? Yeah, it's about that big. Yeah. No squash. But we ain't had squash. We ain't had the first. One. Not the first squash this year. <coughs> now the winter squash, we've got bukus of it. Anyway, but that's amazing that it's kind of just took care of itself mm. there. Some years is that way. Yeah. Seems like when we have had a minute, like after all the stuff with Miss Cindy, then you just kind of want to sit and decompress and yeah. stare off into space or go to bed early and sleep or whatever. It's such exhaustion. Emotional strain is always more exhausting to me than physical strain. Yeah. And we still hadn't, we've still got that too hanging over us that we've not made any decisions about what to do with Miss Cindy's house or her her stuff, or not really. Her house is pretty much like it is, like it was the day that we walked out and left it. We've been going back. And oh yeah, we've been going <coughs> back, and going taking care of it, and taking, doing all that. Yeah, and checking everything, but it's we've, we've not, not really done nothing. Not else. made any decisions about what to do with anything, or. Yeah, we got. I reckon we got plenty of time. Yeah. Might turn it into a pout house for me. Yeah, you could go over there when you need to get away. Well, when you when I get scolded over here for not doing whatever I'm supposed to do, I can go over there and, and pout. make a man cave out of it. Yeah. You could. Which to me would be uh, a bow range and a fish cooker, that sort of thing. Yeah. Where I could do man stuff yeah. until you get being mad at me and then I could come back home. Mm -hmm. It's about the right size for that. It is, ain't it? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if somebody find you though, somebody follow you over there. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. That's what me and Matt's always said. If you want to go off by yourself, somebody will usually come find you. Mm -hmm. Mama, Daddy. You gotta get way back yeah. up in yonder to keep Are that from here? happening. You gotta leave your phone at the house too. Yeah, Matt and I've been doing this series of Q and A's. If you've seen them, if you've not, you can look on our channel and find them. But in one of them, Matt said something funny about that having kids was like joining the mafia. It is <laughs> that you never get out. <clears throat> but that's kind of the, the same thing about if you if you want to take a nap. If I want to take a nap, I have to go. I've learned early on you have to go to your bedroom and lock the door. Even then, somebody mm -hmm. may interrupt it. Mm -hmm. I don't take nap much, naps much anymore. I used to try when the girls were younger and you give up. Yeah, that was it. Was not ever going to happen that way mm -hmm. when, when they were young. Mm -hmm. I, I can, I can now a little bit if I want to, but I don't much. I'm usually doing something else. and Katie always slept really good at night. Mm. They were good, even as babies, They were. we were very lucky they slept good. But because they did, that meant that they were wide open all day, all long. day long. And then they just pass mm -hmm. out by seven o'clock and sleep all night, but they were wide open. Yep. There was not a moment of silence. No. no. It's hard to believe though, I keep going back to that. This is August, in a month's time, we might be feeling some cool weather. And in a month's time, it's going to be time for me to get in the woods. Yeah, Matt's already getting anxious okay, about the sure. hunting season. I sure am. <clears throat> Him and Austin have been making plans and talking about all their gear and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Both of them getting excited. We've done it all year. 
Mm-hmm. You, can, you can turkey hunt and you can fish a little bit just to just to get the edge off, but it's all about the fall. Really? The deer hunting for me anyway. A lot of people is not like that, but I am. Yeah. And I like the other stuff really good, but it ain't it ain't the same as it ain't the same as the fall. Usually by this time we're totally out of deer meat. Gone. None. We ain't mm -hmm. had none in a long time. And that shows how busy we've been that I've not cooked like I normally would. We still have deer meat. Mm -hmm. Which is just what? Yeah. Really? And what? Not really, I didn't really kill anymore. No. Than normal. We've just no, been. No, we've just been so busy. There's yeah. just been so many days that I just didn't cook. Yeah, which that's crazy. But that's why I look forward to it because I know Matt's going to fill our freezers and fill our jars. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to get started. Yeah. Even that wind right there has got a little fall feel to it, and it's not cold, but it's... Mm -hmm. It's just different. It's just a little, just a little bit cooler than what we've been feeling. And it's supposed to be like 96 heat index tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But today's not been, it's not been really bad hot today. No, it's been much better than it was last week. It was miserable. Oh, it was horrible last yeah. week. Horrible to us, anyway. Yeah. Some people have it way hotter than we do. Oh yeah, right. <coughs> um, one of the recent videos we were talking about heat and somebody said, but how hot, what are you talking about? And then I thought, oh, well, of course, because to somebody that lives where it's 100 degrees, mm -hmm. they'd, li they'd laugh at us, be yeah. like, you're silly. Yeah. So that's not hot, you don't know what hot is. Yeah. Uh, but it is hot to us. What When we I think it's really, is. really hot, what? When it gets out of the 50s, oh, it's Oh, yeah, hot. for my hat. But like last week, what was it? It was in the low 90s? Yeah. Yeah, and that's hot. Hot yeah. for us, so. It was, it was a day or two that it was mid-90, 94, 95. Yeah. But not any, like, 100-degree temperatures. But, yeah. I mean, my goodness, what's the difference in 95 and 100? <laughs> well, I don't know. You know? I don't know, but I, I don't want the 100. No, I don't either, but yeah. I don't think that there's markedly that much. once you're miserable you're miserable oh, that's true you know that's my yeah. way i look at it yeah. anyway which for you is about like you said 60. i like i like 55 and under at all times yeah and then sometimes i like uh 20 with a nice eight or ten mile an hour wind can't grow tomatoes like that well, can't have no cherokee reds grow enough when it's when it's uh, warm to you can can them and eat them all winter yeah I meant if it was never, like if you had that all the time, I thought that's what you were saying. Uh, yeah, well. You would import your Cherokee Reds? I think some people would. Um, just don't, I know, I, I'm that way. I just I just can't tolerate the heat. Just can't. Mm -hmm. And ain't never gonna be able to, you know? Yeah, some people like I mean, it like makes that. me sick. And then, I, and then other people can't tolerate the cold. Right, They'd rather right. it be. Whether it be hot, Paul don't like the cold. He can't stand it. Well, I don't want it just it. brutal at all times, but between the two, the yeah. the nineties no, or the right. uh, the twenties, I'll take the twenties. He the time. would take the nineties. is yeah. what I'm saying. I, I just, like it all. I love to have to bundle up and sit by the wood stove, but then I like for it to be hot enough to have a popsicle and stick your feet in a creek and all that too. You stick your feet in the creek when it's cold if you're tough. I'm not that tough though. Yeah, you could start doing your polar plunge like people do, or what? It's not that. It's a, I don't know what it's called. Like it's a therapy, cold therapy or something. Get you a big wash tub out here and fill it with water and get mm -hmm. in it in the winter. Yeah. Sit for three minutes and then get out. Yeah, I'll do it if you will. No, I won't do it. Why? Cause I'm too cold natured. I'll get out here in my drawer tail and just jump right in there if you will. <laughs> no, I won't. I won't. I have to find another way to be healthy. And you got to step outside your comfort zone. Step out of the box a little bit. I just bit. couldn't do it. Well, you could do it. You just won't do it. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm like the person when you go swimming that's like, I got to get into my knees, then I'll go a little bit further, then a little bit further. And then usually somebody so just, like somebody uh, like Matt comes up and just pushes you, and then, yeah. you're, then it's all over. You're just prolonging the agony. I know, yeah. 
I did, but that's me because it's too cold. Get in there and get it over with. I know it's what you do. I've seen you just dive in, and I'm like tiptoeing in, trying to get acclimated to the water. You just dive in and take off. Yeah. The red bird on the top of that tree. I see it. See it. Mm -hmm. I see it calling. I ain't heard the brackets blue jays today. Oh, they've ate up all our blue Yeah, they went on, moved, moved on moved to on. somebody else's house. Yeah. That's another thing we never managed to do this year was to put up a, the things. Last year worked really well, but didn't get it done. Yeah, it, uh, it worked well in your head, maybe. I, I think it worked well. Yeah. I, I think, don't it, think did. it did that good a job. I do. Well, I guess we're going to have to resort to netting or something. Underground gardening. Underground gardening. Yeah. Out of the out of the flyway. That tree's kind of pitiful looking. <clears throat> it always has been. It does offer a little shade, though. I could have let Thomas and them cut it down, but I didn't want to. I've started to cut it two or three times and just never have. One day when it gets up big and falls through the bedroom, we'll wish you would um, cut it. Probably what we should do is. I just hate to, but if you cut it, or if I should have never let it get that big, I should have let you cut it and then plant a fruit tree there. But, there it goes. Mm -hmm. It's about time to feed me. You've come unfed, huh? Mm -hmm. I ain't eating the wheat. You just said you ate two you know, biscuits and a tomato sandwich. I ain't eat enough in a week. Uh -huh. I'm a growing boy, I gotta eat. Mm -hmm. Matt cooked supper last night and it was a really good supper. It's like what's for supper, Grandpa? Yeah. It was mashed potatoes and biscuits, fresh green beans out of the garden. Let's see, what kind of green beans did we eat? Oh, the ones back here that. Um, a subscriber shared with us last year called he just called them Grammy beans because they were his grandmother's and pork fried what did you do it was a tender one but you cut it and I beat it, it and then fried it beat it and rolled it in flour and fried it yeah and it was good it was really good and then of course all the you can have fresh cucumbers and tomatoes and stuff like that it was we've pretty good we've had fried squash one time this year yeah and we bought it. Yeah. Or somebody give it to somebody us. Somebody give home. it to us. Somebody give it to me, yeah. 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 A lot of years when we got a lot of squash, we just ate it every night. Yeah. It's so good. And we did, our okery is just now started coming in. So yesterday we harvested the first of the okery, but I give it to Granny because I wanted her to have it. So, sorry. <laughs> Matt, help me. I've been I was thinking all day about that okery. I was out in the rain and it was, I didn't, it was started raining when I was out there and then he come out there and was like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm almost done. I just wanted to cut this okery. Um, it's before I took Granny for her appointment, so I took it with me and showed it to her, give it to her, because I knew she'd be excited. Sorry. There's probably more already as fast as okra grows. Yeah. If not, by tomorrow or the next day there will be. I'm looking forward to the pan of it when it had done. No, it's strange that it's so, this has just been like weird year for like the okra. It's all beautiful. It's nice, healthy looking plants. I think it all come up, but it's just been slow. It's like those tomatoes hanging on there are still green, a bunch of them. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, it's just slow. I don't know if it's the early coolness that we had, stunted it or what. But. I think they figure that as long as they stay green, they don't get picked. But <laughs> I'm fixing to uh, hurt their feelings. have some green, fried I'll green pull ones. them off there and go in there and fry them. Yeah. Because I like them mighty well, too. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't tell you. I took it to Granny. Okay, well, I'll... I knew <clears throat> she'd be excited about it. There's a red bird back. I'll try to try to move on. <laughs> try to get over it. I'll try get to, over the hurt. I will. Uh, I'll try to come up with another dream. <laughs> uh, Maybe you won't give that away too. Maybe not. Oh, you would give it to her too. 
Yeah, probably. She said, oh my goodness. <laughs> She's probably already eat it. She probably ate it as soon as you give it to her. Yeah. Her and as soon it. as we got back, she probably cooked it. That stuff is mighty good. Or she may be saving it for Sunday dinner. Yeah, she may be. Was there enough of it for a pan full? Yeah, I think so for her. I don't know if Paul likes it or not, but I think so. But there was, yeah, there was a plenty. Well, I guess it's time we go in and I feed Matt since he's come unfed. But we appreciate you coming along with us today as we work in the garden, even though it's on the, I guess, the tail end of things. It's on its way out. Those places that we cleaned out, a lot of those onions that we pulled up, we're going to plant some things in there. So there's still still some things to look forward to. Thinking of fall, Matt's always got to have his mustard greens. I like to have kale uh, through the winter. Usually it'll last through the winter. And then I've got some onions. i got some onion sets, so we're going to plant some more onions, which we will probably just eat as green onions. So there's still things to look forward to. And, of course, it'll be a while before we harvest those beautiful winter squash. We might even get a yellow squash by then. I don't know. I don't know. But we're always grateful when you come along with us to help us celebrate Appalachia. As your grandmas used to tell you, don't be ugly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If I was ugly, I got the other end of the, uh, whatever they could get their the hands on to turn me a flip with. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -mm. You know what it's about time for? What? For us to go up the creek and you cook me something to eat. Well, we can do that, I guess. What do you want? I don't know. Breakfast would be easy. Yeah. You could scout deer sign while we go. Yeah. You could keep your bears off of me while I cook. Yeah. They usually skedaddle by the time they hear you coming. <clears throat> that little wind is nice, isn't it? It is. It even sounds like a little fall that blowing through the leaves. I like it. But there's about eight more weeks of hot weather. Oh yeah, it ain't gone, for sure. It's beautiful though. Mm -hmm. Trees are still really green. Mm -hmm. They've not took on their brown look yet. No. What, another three weeks? It yeah, might be a little before that. But yeah, maybe in about three weeks and toward the tail end of August it'll start that little dingy look to everything. Yes, I don't like that. Why not? It's not. It's my least favorite time of the year. By that time I'm usually ready, like if I had a magic wand to just go make it all go away, all the overgrowth, because things just get so out of out of hand. Too rowdy and growth everywhere on the sides of the road, leaning in on the roads and then in the garden and you know, over behind us, all that stuff. I think the birds have been eating my elderberries too. So I don't think I'm gonna get no elderberries. Really? Yeah, they're gone. They didn't even wait for them to get ripe. They're eating them green. Maybe the little birdies are hungry. I've got them a whole forest of food here to eat. You come out here and have a talk with them. Yeah. I don't think they'd listen. You ready to go eat? Yeah, I'm ready. It's just peaceful out here. It's because I'm here. Yeah, it's like Granny says, it's right peaceable out here. Yeah. She says, we're right peaceable, just stick around. Yeah. Stay around. Somebody sent me a video. Shows we're going to get a big snow. Really? Yeah. When? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Sometime in the winter. I think it was January. I believe it. Well, I feel like that's just a mile tad far out to know that. Well, it was a weather person telling it, you know. 
Oh, showing man. that how well I know but showing how this area would have more than un, um, snow than usual if it snows we got to go sledding and build okay. a snowman and go walk in the woods I mean I'd like it to be one of those snows that lasts for like three days <clears throat> I'll put your order in yeah well I have for the last like four years and it ain't happened yet you know how you tell when it's going to be really cold, how? a cold winter? How? You see a woolly worm in a sleeping bug. Oh, yeah. yeah. What's all those woolly worm They're all foretelling the, yeah, things? Yeah, there's like everybody's is different. See one in the sleeping bug, it's going to be rough. Uh, Granny's is the winter or the summer before the blizzard, she's seen a solid black one. But now I've seen solid black ones since then, and it ain't, we had no blizzard. But that's hers. And there's the persimmon seed. If you cut it open, if it has a shovel or a knife, a spoon or a knife, it'd be like you're shoveling snow or not. I can't remember what the knife part is. And then, of course, the number of frost in August, right? Or something. What was it? Not frost. Uh, fogs. What was that one? Number of fogs in August. No, no. I don't pay much something. attention to that stuff. Yeah. And then, uh, what's the one about the first day you hear the Katie Dids, 90 days yeah. from that day is the first frost. Yeah. yeah. I don't believe that one either. What's on me? A uh, piece of leaf. No, I don't believe that one, but people, Granny says that one. Yeah, we heard Katie Dids one year and uh, it was like the end of May or first of June or something like that. And then 90 days from then was going to be, uh, when was it, the end of August? Yeah, it was way early. Yeah. I don't remember how it went. Yeah, but. it was going to frost, and I said, I know, I don't. <laughs> it yeah. might somewhere, but I don't believe it will here. Yeah. Well, I don't know about all the signs. I just hope I get a big snow. Well, I hope you do, too. I like snow. I like to get out and tramp through the woods and see what kind of tracks you can find and follow them. That year that I was pregnant with Corey and Katie, or right before that, I mean, it was already snowing. Like before Christmas, we had so much snow that year. Mm -hmm. It just seemed like it went on and on, and it lasted like it was a big snow that stayed on the ground for three or four days. Yeah, and then it would, when it finally went away, it'd come another one. Yeah, it was great, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, we need another year like that. I mean, when you, it's unusual for us to be able to sled till you're just wore out day after day. It'd be real unusual for me to do it. <laughs> I ain't getting on sledding. Oh, I'm too fun. old for that. They're fun. I like to watch everybody else, but I'm a little, I'm not. You're more walking through the woods looking at the yeah, tracks. I no, I don't care about sledding. I like the sledding. I like walking in the woods. I like the hot chocolate. And the, oh, I like that. Just the cozy feeling it gives everything. Of course, if I lived in a place that had snow all the time, like Mark and Maddie, I'd probably get tired of it pretty quick. Old people on sleds leads to doctor trips. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, long-term disability and that sort of thing, and I'd just say not. Mm -hmm. Get all, all stove up anyway, whether you end up in the hospital. But I got stove up when I was a kid sledding. Yeah. You take a tumble off. And run into somebody else. You stove up now. I know. <laughs> I am this week. Yeah. Hopefully that'll go away. Yeah, it's bad when you get older. You get stove up because you sleep the wrong way. Oh yeah. <laughs> Instead of no sledding or yeah. falling off your bicycle or something, it's just no. I slept wrong. I've got up one a bunch of mornings and slept wrong. Got a crick in my neck and couldn't even put my socks on. <laughs> it's bad. I mean, have to have to one hand it. And then when you're a young and you can just sleep in the floor with no pillow and yeah. it's on bare floor just, and yeah, just spend curl. the night with somebody and just curl up and sleep all night curl and get up. up and run and play. And yeah, just curl up like a little hound dog puppy and uh, jump up and run. Yeah. Man, that's over with. Yeah, that's over with. I need a shot of Novocaine just to get up. <laughs> no, I do this week. Once I'm well, get up and move around a little bit in 15, 20 minutes, I'm ready. I can do it. I'm ready to go. Yeah. I can strike out and go right up the top of the mountain. Then it's just that getting up and 
the first, first few minutes of moving around is yeah. kind of rough sometimes. All right, let's go. You got ants crawling on you. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Well, where's the bees? I don't know. There's none here today. They must not. It's another sign of. They must not know I'm out here. fall, or either they don't know you're here. They're all over there on the hyssop. Oh, good. It's a good place for them. Yeah. Let's stay off the side of my dome. <laughs> 